Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Josh Little, who is in Utah. How are you doing, Josh? So good. Well, Excellent. glad to be here. Excellent. Josh is the founder of four tech companies, Maestro, Bloomfire, Bloomfire, Quizzer, and Volley, that have collectively been used by hundreds of millions of people and featured in TechCrunch, Mashable, Entrepreneur Inc., and Forbes. Uh, and today what we're going to talk about is how to have fewer meetings and get more done. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great subject, Josh, because uh, I always I always found in the past, like I remember one company. I was at it was a startup in Ireland and we were in a small building and we had one meeting room. Right, that was all. There was only one meeting room. Mm -hmm. And therefore you had few and far between meetings because one meeting room, you know, people just managed to get things done. We moved into a bigger building that had you know 5 to 10 meeting rooms and suddenly meetings exploded. And suddenly yeah. people were having meetings all the time. <laughs> That's an interesting observation. And now amplify that by having Zoom. We have mm -hmm. for remote teams, we have unlimited meeting rooms. Therefore, uh, we, you know, Zoom fatigue and all of the things that we're currently experiencing if we're trying to work remote. Yeah. So why is it that our that often our default position is when anything happens is let's have a meeting, let's set up a meeting? Well, because we need to talk to move work forward. And, and we found that out acutely when uh, the, the pandemic hit, we all went remote. Uh, the need to talk didn't decrease at all. Like we, we, we discount how much we actually need to coordinate and collaborate to do what we're trying to do as a team, right? Um, especially sales teams. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, th that didn't fall by the wayside at all. So now you, you have two options. You're either going to type or you're going to talk. But if you want to talk, You've got to schedule it. It's got to, it's got to be synchronous, right? That's the only way we can historically have a conversation is we get in a room. Now we mm -hmm. had a constraint. It sounds like you had one that it was just one room. Therefore, <laughs> we can't get in the room. Therefore, we we can't talk. We're going to have to do that in the hallway. But with Volley, what we're trying to do is create a new way to talk, a, a way that combines both the richness of video that we have here in this yeah. Zoom conversation with the flexibility of text. So Volley's asynchronous video first approach to communication allows teams to communicate better uh, by using video. So in, in a, a volley conversation, we take turns just like this conversation, except we record our turn with video, which gives us a number of benefits, being able to speak versus type, being able to listen to the other on 2X, being able to think before we give a response, all of those things. But when we give a response, it has all of the context, humanity and empathy that uh, video can deliver. So we like to think we're creating a best of both worlds communication solution. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting concept because as you say that just because you can bring people together and just say we can all to get, come together in a Zoom meeting, it doesn't always mean that we get everybody's attention, that it really suits everybody, that people can think on the fly. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of constraints there, even in a physical meeting. Uh, you know, there isn't always the opportunity to to think and reflect or everybody's not engaged. So it sounds like you're creating something that also allows for that kind of reflection and more informed uh, interaction. Absolutely. We like to think that we're leveling the playing field for communication because we've all been in you know, meetings, there's just bad behavior. People talk too much. Some people don't need to be there. Some people need to speak up more, but they, they can't, you know, I heard from one engineer uh, who's one of our users who said, you know, my friends on WhatsApp and Snapchat think I'm funny. They think I'm like responsive, but no one at work thinks that about me because I just don't know what to say in a synchronous meeting. I like whenever I walk out of the room, that's when I have my good idea. That's, and I trip over my words. So Volley kind of levels that communication field uh, and a, allows kind of a more inclusive form of talking because everyone has an equal opportunity to hit the record button when they're dang ready to say something that's meaningful. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a I think that's a, a that's a great idea because yeah I think it uh, it allows people of all different personality types and engagement types to to be more to be more involved. So how do you and um, when when you when you talk to people how do you help them uh, wean themselves off of 
just having you know synchronous meetings all the time because it is something that that people do as we said default to and you go okay there's an issue let's get everybody together and have a meeting or i've got an idea let's get everybody how do you how do you help people differentiate between when that is the correct course of action and when you could use something like volume or 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 some other way of interacting yeah, well, uh, first is kind of to understand the value prop of volley, which is to mm -hmm. communicate better. Like, if you really don't care about communication uh, with your coworkers, then volley is not going to make a difference for you. Like, sending a video instead of a Slack message isn't going to really move the needle. But if, and what we're finding is for certain teams, small teams trying to do big things, stakes are high, communication matters, relationships are new. Uh, volume makes a lot of sense because it it helps them communicate better. And then what they start to realize is like, oh, we could replace stand up with this. We could. Why, why are we having one on one scheduled? Why aren't these on demand and ongoing? Why aren't we syncing up and unblocking right now instead of Thursday at three thirty? Um, that's where the ace the line between asynchronous and synchronous starts to get stretched with something like volley. So we're seeing teams not only replace Slack and Loom behavior, but as well as some of their Zoom behavior. So it depends on where you're coming from and what you're trying to do. But if you're trying to replace some of those synchronous meetings or just re reduce some of those, my suggestion is start with one thing, start with stand up and just say, hey, we're going to do our stand-ups here. And inevitably what happens is, is like, oh, that was good. I just listened to that on 2X and I was able to skip back and have total recall of the conversation and then long press and dive into an individual conversation with just that person. And um, yeah, that feels way better than jumping on a call, having the obligatory small talk, you know, stopping doing what you're doing uh, and filling up the, you know, 20, 30 minutes that stand up needs to take sometimes. Yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a great point because yeah, it, it, it it's become you know, almost increasingly difficult to schedule everybody at the same time. And, and especially because I, I guess one of the other phenomena that you're bumping up against too, which probably why uh, a solution like Volley, uh, you know, has, has, uh, has some legs is the fact that, you know, you now have globally dispersed uh, companies, you know, you have access to talent all over the world. So you can put together teams, um, you know, in so many different time zones and locations, but it does, create the synchronous meeting issue. Absolutely. Uh, and so one thing, it's a pretty nerdy thing to say, but what I like to say sometimes is we're allowing conversations to happen outside of this space-time continuum. And when you have a team that's globally dispersed in all sorts of different time zones, you need a way to talk that isn't tied to time and synchronicity. And, and that's very what, what, much what Volley breaks up and sort of starts to blur those um, those time zones in a, in a pretty meaningful way. And there's going the future of work is not going to be more on-premise. It's only gonna be more remote, more flexible, more distributed. So we like to think we're kind of enabling that future of work um, by creating the tool that needed to exist. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, not nerdy at all, but I hope you have a flux capacitor in there too. In your <laughs> uh, no, but the point the point is a very relevant one because yeah, is because I think uh, a lot of companies struggled when the pandemic happened, uh, especially companies that were so reliant on physical buildings and spaces, like sending everybody home and then struggling and then trying to recreate recreate everything with Zoom on the fly and uh, without really having a lot of experience or even a lot of thought going into it is more reactive. So what you're talking about now, I think is really incredibly important because I do believe that the future of work is, is a hybrid model. There'll obviously be some people who will need to be in physical spaces depending on the job, but overall, I think uh, you know, we're going to have a much more distributed workforce. And like, you, like you're saying here is taking the time zone out of the equation, then it makes it so much more appealing and so much more manageable. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's not only going to be more flexible, but you're in different modalities in the future of work. You're in the car, then you're at a coffee shop, then you're in an office, then maybe back at home in this hybrid environment. Mm -hmm. And you need a communication tool that is more of a shapeshifter, which Volley tends to be. It shows up how you need to. You can walk the dog and still volley and, and move work forward. You can you can be in the car in the morning, dropping the kids off or whatever, and still be volleying. You shouldn't volley while you drive, but um, mm. you, you get the idea. It allows yeah. you to you, you communicate how you and show up how you need to so that 
um, you can move work forward. Yeah, and the other thing I think uh, uh, as well, Josh, is I mean, we live in a, such a fast paced uh, environment today and things moving so fast and, and the expectation is, is you know, that it, things are answered immediately and we're always on the, we're on the ball immediately and all of that. And it sounds like, again, this gives you an opportunity to, to be engaged and, and up to date and to be able to move at speed. Yeah, no one feels this pain more than someone who's working at a big company who moves very slowly. I remember working in you know, a couple of Fortune 500 companies, and it seemed like everything was like a week away. Like we couldn't even talk about the decision we need to make until next week. Then we talk about it. Well, we need to set up another meeting so that we could talk about it next week. Everything just moves so slow because of this lag time between turns in a conversation or meetings um, that need to happen. And aren't meetings just conversations? And if so, why can't we just have them right now? Why do we have to wait till Thursday at 3.30? Um, so yeah, Volley gives you a way to say what you need to say or share what you need to say and then move on with your day and get back into deep work, which is why you were what you were hired to do. Yeah, and what I like about that too is the is is the fact that it can be focused too. Because let's face it, I mean that as we mentioned earlier, one of the biggest complaints about meetings is number one is for some reason everybody seems to think a meeting needs to be an hour. So well, first of yeah. all, you know, it's put on as an hour. Second, you know, nobody really puts agendas together that well. You know, maybe a couple of bullet points, and you end up discussing a couple of relevant things and maybe you stray into other areas. And as you said, you got the small talk. So you've got a lot of stuff going on, but it sounds like this allows you to be much more focused and eliminate all the noise. That's right. It, there is a lot of bad behavior associated with synchronous meetings and they're like sponges. I don't know how magically this took exactly 60 minutes for us to talk about, you know, and we've all seen the meme, like this, this meeting could have been an email. Well, it, it Maybe it couldn't have been an email, but it could have been a few volleys. That's for dang sure. And there, there's nothing like kind of the pressure of, of recording an asynchronous video that forces you to get to your point. No one wants to sit and meander recording a video of themselves. And for some, I don't know why we feel okay doing that when we're in a synchronous meeting with nine people times our hourly rate, you know, and like the, the clock is ticking um, and, and everyone's having to listen to you on one X, right? It, you, you can't speed the conversation up like you, you can with Volley. So yeah, there, there's a lot of cultural norms that we're fighting against, but I think we're, we're breaking them up for the better and allowing conversation to flow like it needs to, or like, like the future of work or the speed of work needs it to at least. Yeah. And I guarantee you probably if you, uh, if you did a survey of, of people who were at home during the pandemic and maybe didn't have as many meetings or whatever, I guarantee you most of them would say they didn't miss all those additional, additional meetings, but it is, it, but it is a good point about there has to be some kind of behavior change. Uh, Cause like I said, I mean, we have the default hour meeting. It's almost like, and it's almost like sometimes people are like, Oh, your 40 minutes have gone by and we've exhausted everything. And it's almost like apologetic. I'm sorry. Uh, well, if we don't have anything, I guess I can give everybody 20 minutes back and all of this, but it almost, it's almost like uh, people feel bad about that. They couldn't fill the whole hour with, with, with content as opposed to being more succinct from the get go. Right. Yeah. And that's where you get to, okay. Any other thoughts? Okay. Can we, you know, and you're inviting a filling of, of the hour and we just don't need that. We just need to get to the point. We need to talk about the heart of the matter, get right to it and, and move work forward. If it matters. That's why I said earlier <laughs> in certain teams, certain size companies, it kind of, I, I worked at those companies. I know it, the, I, I had someone lean over to me once and show me on, this was like on his Blackberry 15 years ago, like, uh, I'm back to back all day. And he kind of used that as a point of pride. And I thought, gross, why are, why are we so excited about having back to back meetings all day? Is that something really we should be proud of now, 15 years later, I'm trying to solve that problem, create a, a new way to, to collaborate and communicate that, you know, is rich, you know, and, and allows you to talk, but doesn't have all of the, the constraints of synchronicity. Yeah, it's an it's interesting point that you just brought up there. And I do think, and, and again, it, it's part of the cultural changes that need to, to take place. But that's exactly right. I mean, we celebrate 
oh, people being ultra busy. So yeah, so I mean, your 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 colleague would have expected you to go, wow, you're really busy. To the IE, yeah. then you must be making a massive contribution. You must be really there. You cool. go. Yes. <laughs> And we've got to we've got to knock that on the head because efficiency is far better than busyness. And and as you said, I mean, being succinct about things. So so there does have to be some cultural shifts in how we perceive people's effectiveness. Absolutely. Yeah. You were hired to do a job, not to mm -hmm. sit in meetings all day um, and sitting in meetings all day is not doing a job there there is real tangible work that, that needs to be done and most of us i think would like to just make that work happen as soon as it can and 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 accomplish our objectives in less time not more time um so okay. it, it's not that all meetings are evil there are still a great no, need to, to get mm -hmm. together synchronously especially for emotionally charged conversations or things that require like tight feedback loop um from multiple people those things aren't great asynchronous honestly so volley doesn't replace all meetings uh, there's still a, a great reason to meet synchronously but for everything else volley can make them better and help you communicate better yeah, no, I can imagine that if you just send somebody, uh, you know, a video with a lot of like, um, shall we say, constructive feedback, uh, and it was done asynchronously, it may not be received in the right way, <laughs> as it would be if you were face to face. Um, the other thing, though, Josh, is how do you I mean, I think a lot of people have overcome their fear of video, obviously, during the pandemic, because they've been forced to. But it is an interesting thing, phenomena is even of people like even I, I know some salespeople who who love like they'll walk into a room full of people, work at, you know, or a networking event, they'll work that room, but they just don't like being on video. Yeah, we hear this from about five percent of our users, actually, that this this is a thing that people aren't quite comfortable. But what I can't what I can't get past is that the future of work is not going to be less comfortable with video. Like we're only going to be more comfortable if we're interested in, in better communication. And if you look at young people, um, my kids, for example, they don't type with their thumbs. They're recording a voice message. They're recording a video. They're jumping on FaceTime. They're on Snapchat. Like that's just the, the generation that's coming up into the corporate world. This Gen Z just gets it. That's kind of how they grew up. They're on YouTube. They, they understand those things. I'm not saying it's completely generational because I think there's a personality mm -hmm. type that's a little obsessed and neurotic and afraid of how they're putting themselves out there. I think it's just going to be a matter of them getting comfortable with the value that, that recording an asynchronous video can bring. It helps you speak, uh, which is seven times faster than typing. It helps you can listen to others on 2x. You can take time to think. You can communicate with all the humanity and empathy and then move on with your day. And so once someone starts to see those benefits and, and see those bear fruit in their work life and help help them see that they are moving work forward faster, they are being more productive, that's when they'll say, okay, I, I can get more comfortable with video. But hey, Josh, it'd be nice if you had filters, right? So we hear, we hear, <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, and I guarantee you there's a lot of people who uh, will sit through synchronous meetings today wishing that they could 2x the speed, that's for sure. Oh, man. <laughs> um, well, the other thing ahead, that you just mentioned. Right? Yeah, skip ahead, yeah. And the other thing, yeah, I mean, I think it's just like, you know, people have to get over their fear of video because it's just, as you said, I mean, it's ubiquitous. And I guarantee you, they probably make videos and do selfies and do FaceTime and never think about that. But suddenly in a work context, they get all freaked out. But it's just like the first time you hear yourself back in the old days, the first time you heard yourself on a tape recorder, your voice, like, yeah. I don't sound like that. And you go, and you do. And, uh, and so just get over <laughs> it and move on. <laughs> right, right. It's hard to tell a user that, but that's kind of the answer. Yeah, no, it kind of is, you know, just do it. And just like anything else, if you don't like the way you come across and whatever, just record yourself, practice, you know, and ask somebody else for input. How can I do these better or whatever? It's like, like anything else. It's a it's a skill that you can develop and you can enhance and you can become really good at it. Well, that's a great point. And I don't think we state that enough as a benefit of Volley is how often in a synchronous conversation can you restate yourself or is that culturally acceptable? And with Volley, there's a cancel button right next to that one you're recording. Like just say it again, because you're probably going to say it better. You're going to say it faster. And that 
everyone else on the team is going to appreciate that you did that, right? So we're not trying to create an obsessive behavior, but we mm -hmm. we do want to present ourselves well. We we do want to come off right. One, um, one engineer uh, had said that, well, I, I guess I already mentioned that, the the Snapchat WhatsApp yeah. engineer, right? And, and so that's why he appreciates Volley is it helps him put himself out in the best light. Put together, introverts kind of need a, I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. Volley is for people like me who need a minute to put themselves together to, I'm good, if you give me just a few seconds to think about my response, I'm gonna come up with a much better response um, than I am able to synchronously. Like many of my responses today in, in this conversation have been so-so, you know, but if, if you just gave me 10 seconds, ah, oh, I could nail it. Yeah, no, no, they've been great. Uh, don't, 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 don't. False humility there, Josh. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but no, I, I, I agree with you, and I think it will. I think it really will help. Uh, what you're doing will help a lot of people. And as you said, I mean, it is. It's a bit funny in it, in, and it happens in synchronous meetings, and we see it all the time when somebody will make a long statement, and then it's greeted by silence, and then they'll be like, oh. Did you get, did you understand, did you get where I'm coming from? And you know, people will reluctantly start to go, um, not really. And then, you know, they got to go into another explanation. But as you said, I mean, you, in this case, I mean, you know, you can look at it yourself. You can decide, okay, is this working? Have I said what I wanted to say? Is this, is this something that's understandable? And if not, let me do it again. Right. Absolutely. And if someone needs to listen over again, they can or skip forward because it doesn't yeah. pertain to them. They can all things we can't do in the space time continuum. Nerd alert. Excellent. <laughs> Great place to finish in the space time continuum. Yeah. Uh, all of Josh's information, information about Bali, et cetera, will be below the video. Uh, but before we go, Josh, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Uh, about myself uh, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yep. Volley is my fourth company. It's my magnum opus. I've, I've created four companies all around helping people better communicate at work. Uh, some of which you would know, uh, Maestro, Bloomfire, Quizzer. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I started my career as a teacher, went into the corporate world and the three Fortune 500 companies and started in entrepreneurship. Now it's just, uh, it's a, it's an addiction. I just can't stop creating exciting and valuable companies. Once you learn how to do it, it's just, you kind of can't stop doing it. So that's why I keep coming back. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, listen there, Josh, thanks again. And I encourage people to go check out, check out Josh and check out Volley. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.